Our text today is read from the first letter of St. John the Apostle to the Church, chapter 4, and beginning with verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. The basic description then of the truth and the light and the fellowship of God as it comes down to us is this, having the same mentality, the same mind, and the same motive that God had and has in this world. We know that in answer to the question, what must I do, Jesus said, love God and love your neighbor, and on these two things all the law hinges. Everything that God wants from man Everything that he has ever commanded, everything that righteousness and truth is comprised of, is comprehended in this, a true, biblically defined love for God and love for neighbor. Now, there are many components of life, and there are many teachings in the Bible that go into this area of life or that and give us many specific commandments. We're not trying to say we don't need those. If we didn't need them, they wouldn't be in the Bible. But what St. John is getting at is the new nature is this, to have love for God and love for others. This is how God is. This is what has motivated everything that God has ever done. Whether the rationalist or the philosopher or the positive thinker or the rebel understands it or not is beside the point. Everything that God has ever done has been motivated by love. And if we want to be like God is, if we want to be born of God in our lives, our souls, our Christian behavior, then we must have this basic motivation as well. This is the point that the apostle is getting at. And if we love God and if we love others, we will obey the commandments of God because those things will tell us what to do. That will be what is good for us. That will be how God shows his love for us. And in obedience, we show our love for God and we show our love for others. And so we want to obey what God tells us to do. Now, for the simple and sincere and earnest-minded person, this can create a dilemma. Who do you believe? You want to be humble? You don't want to be judgmental? You want to do everything that is right? You want to be cooperative? 
Do you believe everybody that comes along and says they're of God? Do you give to everything that's supposed to be good? Do you participate in everything because it claims a good cause? How do you keep from being totally vulnerable to every whim and movement that comes along? Are we supposed to be censorious? Are we supposed to be judgmental toward religious activities that come our way and with which we become acquainted? Well, the apostle said very clearly, very plainly, yes, we are. He said, Beloved, don't believe every spirit, but try that spirit to see whether it's of God or not, because there are many false prophets who have gone out into the world, many false Christs, many claiming to be of Christ who are not, many things claiming to be good that are not. And so you've got to try them. Now the word spirit is a Greek word pneuma, and it comes from the root word neo, and it actually means a current of air. It can mean a mental disposition, a vital principle, supernatural activity, whether demon or angel, and spiritual activity. You say supernatural and spiritual activity can be of false prophets? Oh yes, very definitely can be. St. Paul, in writing to the Corinthians, because they were down there among the philosophers and the mind manipulators, the positive thinkers, the charismatic humanists, and oh yes, this is an old group that has been with us for a long time. It revised from time to time and so on. And the apostle was worried. He said in the 11th chapter of Second Corinthian letter, he said in verse 2, I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, I am afraid that you might well bear with him. And he went on to say in the 13th verse of that second chapter, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself, listen to this, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Many false prophets have gone out into the world. Don't believe every spirit. Put it to the test. And how do you do that? Well, it's very, very simple. Very simple. It is also very resisted and opposed and resented and spoken against in today's would-be Christian movements. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. What does it mean? Does it mean simply that Someone gets up on the television or on the radio or in front of the church or writes in the book and says, we believe that Jesus Christ has come into this world. Is that what it means? Well, it isn't what it means. First of all, I call upon you to remember that we are talking about sanctification and Christian living and the confession that we are talking about here, as the apostle said in the 19th verse, or, or earlier on in the 18th verse of chapter 3, must be indeed and not in word. It must be a confession 
of the life and of behavior and not just a theoretical position. But what is the content of believing and confessing that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? Well, first of all, we could paraphrase this in order to get at the thing in this way, to believe that Jesus is the Christ. The Christ, the term the Christ, means the anointed. And if you're a Bible student, you know that that has a specific meaning, and it means the anointing of the king. That Jesus is the anointed one. That Jesus is the king. And it adds to that, that he has come in the flesh. What's so unusual about that? Hasn't every king that has ever come into this world come in the flesh? And don't we know, we who acknowledge that Jesus was here in this world, that he was here in the flesh? Isn't this a very simple and ordinary thing? No, you see, it, it, it goes to the heart of the whole counsel of the Scripture, which teaches us this, that someday in this world, God would reign in his kingdom. And that's the teaching of the New Covenant as it was found in the Old Testament. I will come unto you. I will do these things myself, he said in the 31st chapter of Jeremiah in verse 31. You couldn't do them, so I will come, and I will do them. And the prophets spoke of that one who would be born, who would be called Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God among us, or God with us, and the prophet said, His name shall be called Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Everyone who is of God confesses that Jesus was the Christ, Jesus was God in the flesh. Well, this rules out the Jehovah's Witnesses, doesn't it? They are not of God. They don't confess that Jesus was God in the flesh? Oh, but it has a much more particular and closer and more profound meaning to Christian people who are looking for what spirit to follow. We don't follow the spirit of the cults and the spirit of heresy. We're talking about something subtler than that. We're talking about sanctification. Everyone who is of God confesses by his life that Jesus is the King that he has the right to rule our lives. He does that not with his mouth, but with his deeds. He teaches and practices submission to the authority of God and to the word of God. The false prophet Christ claimed to be of Jesus. And St. Paul, in 2 chapter 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians, the, the 11th chapter, we were just talking about, said they preach Jesus, but it's another Jesus. They preach Christ, but it's not the Christ we preach. They preach the gospel, but it's an altered and a changed and a different gospel than the one that is written in the pages of this book. Every spirit that teaches you and demonstrates to you through their behavior that Christ has the right to rule our lives and that we are duty-bound to obey this commandment, this word of God, which tells us what the love and the obedience of God is. Now, it doesn't make any difference that these spirits claim to be of Christ, that they claim to be of Jesus or even that they claim to want to save souls. St. Paul talked about Eve being beguiled by the serpent in the Garden of Eden. The, the devil claimed to be wanting to save souls. Oh, yes, he did. That's what he said to Eve. Eve, I just want to save your life. I just want to save your soul. That's all I want to do. I want to rescue you from this drab, dreary, slavish thing that God has got laid out for you. I'm just trying to help you. I just want to see you delivered from this bondage. 
he claimed to want to save her soul. But what he really wanted to do was destroy her soul, and he did it with her cooperation. Because God said, in the day you eat, you will die. The soul that sinneth, it will die. And did she? And did Adam? And have all of her children since then? You see, he was lying, but that's what he said. I just want to save souls. That's all I want to do, Eve. I just want to see lives saved. I'm just a good old boy, just trying to help out. That's all I'm trying to do. But Eve, you've got to be you, for heaven's sakes. You've got to have your own life. You can't let people tell you what to do. Did you know that when anybody comes to you with that pitch, they're an enemy, and you better get away from them as fast as you can. When people started telling you, you've just got to be you. You've got to find yourself. You've got to do what you want to do. You can't let people be telling you what to do. That person is an enemy of your soul. Oh, yes, they are. You say, I don't believe that. Well, that's all right. Neither did Eve. But they are. And those that are of God teach us to obey God, to submit to the rule of Christ, to bow to his lordship, to prove our love by keeping his commandments. And everybody, no matter whether they tell you that they believe the Bible, that they are of Christ, that they are of Jesus, that they are of God, that they want to save souls, if they don't teach you to give up your carnal independence and submit your will to the control of Christ and to obey this word of God and do it gladly, they're not of God. They are anti-Christ. They may be preaching Jesus. And they may be preaching Christ, but it's another Jesus. And it's another Christ. Because the Christ that the apostles preached can only be served through submission and obedience to the Word of God. Anybody doesn't tell you that is your enemy. Anybody tells you other than that is a liar. Anybody tells you other than that is anti-Christ. And they don't love you. I'll tell you that right now. These are antichrists. And we told you to watch out for them. And even now they're here. They're everywhere. Preaching in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Christ, in the name of the mission of the church. But that's not what they're up to. We'll talk here shortly about what they're up to. And they're here. But ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. You know, there's two kinds of people in the professing Christian world today. There's the kind of people who are looking for an in-group to get with. They're looking for an advantage. They're looking for something that will make them feel good. They're looking for something that will make them wealthy or well. They're looking for a club to belong to. They're looking for a mass to follow. And then there are the, the true people of God who are tired of the carnal way, the false way, the fallen way, and they're looking for God, and they're looking for truth. All they want to know is what is true. Where is the path of righteousness? Where is the light and the life? And St. Paul said, you, or, or St. John said, you who are of God, Already you're listening to what we're saying, aren't you? You're saying, that's right. That's the way I felt. I, you're saying things that I've believed for a long time, but I can't get anybody to listen to me, and I can't get anybody to agree with me, and nobody will share them with me. You see, you have overcome these false prophets because you're of God, and you have an unction, and there's a Holy Ghost in you that's greater than that power of false religion, and it can't overcome you because you're seeking God. You're seeking truth. You're seeking light. And when you hear the truth, you know it because you're listening for it. When you see the light, you know it because you're looking for it. And Jesus said, Blessed are you that seek because you'll find. 
but they are of the world. You say, so many people are listening to the hype. They're going to see the religious shows. They're going to the religious carnivals. They're walking up and down in the religious circus. They're spending their money on the side shows. Of course they are, because they're of the world. And they listen to these false prophets because that's what they want to hear. The false prophets are telling them what they want to hear. That's what they're looking for. They're not looking for God. They're not looking for truth. They're not willing to die to themselves. They're not looking for a message of self-denial and the giving up of this world in exchange for that which is to come. They're not listening for that. They're looking for a way to gain the advantage here and now. And when these false prophets come along and give them that pitch, they say, that's what I wanted to hear. That's my man. That's my movement. That's where I belong. And they are entirely right. They are of the world. They speak of the world. And the world heareth them. This is that laughing, clapping, shouting, leering, skipping mass of people who are going down the Broadway. They are of the world. They speak of the world. And the world listens to them. And the world follows them. But we are of God. And he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not. And hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Those that are of the truth, listen to the truth. Those that are not of the truth, do not listen to the truth. And the Apostle St. John said, those that are of the truth, listen to us because we have been endowed by the Holy Ghost in a special dispensation to put into pen this inerrant, ageless truth. It cannot change. It will not change. The Word of God is forever settled in heaven. It is no individual's private opinion, said St. Peter. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, and those that are of the truth are, are not only willing to listen to it, but only too happy to hear it. Hear it. Suppose a man was dying of thirst in the desert, and he was searching desperately, and he came over a little sand dune, and there was a palm tree and a bubbling pool of clear, cold water. And he said, oh, heck, do I have to go down there and drink that water? No, you see, that isn't what he'd do. He'd use what energy he had left to hurry down there and fall on his face in that water, and he'd drink deeply of it because he's dying for the want of it, and it's the one thing in this world that he's been searching for, and this is what St. John was talking about. Those that are of the truth, search for it. David said, My soul pants for you, O God, like the little deer in the desert pants for the water hole. I look for you, said Saint David, or said David the prophet, more than for my necessary food. A search, a desperate search for truth, and those that are searching it. For it not only will find it, but then they hear it, they will listen, and they will follow. And those that are not searching for truth, they're just searching for religion, they won't follow. And this is how we know, said St. John, the difference between truth and error. Those who love and follow the word of God are of the truth. And those who resent it, even though they claim to be of Christ, and claim to be Christian and base all of their beliefs upon mental and intellectual and philosophical and rational and emotional experiences and not upon the Word of God, they're not of the truth. And those that teach like that are not of the truth. And that's how we know the difference 